as we go and we start writing more and more tests, it's pretty common that there's going to be shared configuration or setup or stuff like that, especially as things get more complex. We're working with a very basic user class right now. But let's showcase what a before each does. And that's really what a test setup method is. It does something before each test runs. So if you remember earlier, I talked about the importance of sort of standardizing some of our items here. So we're going to do that with our model because we're going to essentially in our before each here override our model before each test. Now, if you remember earlier, our user class goes ahead and assigns this. There's really no reason to pass a null or empty here other than to be explicit. So we don't need to do it every single time. So what we can do is model is equal to a new user. And now before each one of these tests, it's going to go ahead and instantiate our model. So let's get rid of this. So this is a pretty basic test. So the arrange, the act, the it's not really something we need here. It's fairly simplistic. And now before each one of our models, everything still runs. This is running before each one of these tests run. And we could test it real quick, just to give an idea. So if we did first name, and here we set it equal to hello world, it's gonna fail this first name test because we actually are expecting it not to have a value and we're passing it a value. But before each, it's gonna be scoped to the group that you're in. So in our case, this is gonna be for the everything within this describe. But let's say that in a different describe, we didn't want to instantiate an empty model. We can either override it directly, or we could actually have a before each in each describe block. So it's scoped very much so like block scope variables. Now, I really wanted to hammer down some of this before each, because I think it might be confusing for people who aren't uh, accustomed to testing. This before each runs before each one of these tests, right? So. If I were to console.log, I don't know, let's just say um, Dylan, the expectation here is that it's going to run three times because we have three tests. And you can see it does. Now, imagine I went into each one of these before each is, and I went and I put, you know, console.log one for this one, and I did console.log two for this one, and I did console.log three for this one, what do you expect to happen? Well, the before each runs before each test. So my expectation is goes Dylan, then one, Dylan, then two, Dylan, then three, and so on and so forth. Um, the tests get sometimes jumbled in different orders for more accurate testing because you want your tests to sort of uh, function that way. But you can see that it does the before each and then it does a test, does before each and then does a test. This is all by design. The idea is to run some logic and do some setup typically before we run an actual test. So in our case, we're running our model uh, setup before we go and run each test instead of actually instantiating in there. Now, as you go and work in more complex code, this user model or your class may have a service that it's getting injected that requires you to set up a mock backend and and you might be stubbing dependencies. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have to keep recreating these things again and again. So before each is really there to run some logic and usually some setup before each individual test.